Hi guys, I am Shidbu with the one for Anayan, making this video to explain why the MPL PH Season 6 qualifiers is not a joke. Now, this video is done as a public response no, to Assassin's Dave's video claiming that the MPL PH Season 6 qualifiers was a joke, diba? And that dog is team, the next play Predator Solid was given a free pass of how poor the other team in his qualifier group are drafting and playing. Now, Assassin Dave is an English YouTube content creator that focuses mainly on MLBB. It's active meta updates and he has given his fair share of analysis for MLBB esports. With this, I'll deliver the majority of this video in English so Dave and maybe some non-Taglish viewers will not have a problem watching. Another premise is we'll focus more on explaining the good points and uh, enforce more reason behind the decision of the teams during the MPLPH Season 6 qualifiers and hopefully establish that the said qualifiers still has been competitive and is therefore not a joke. Also, I won't be assuming that Dave is clickbaiting his title or cloud chasing the PHO gens. At least for the initial part of this video, right? Because it is a content creation technique that has been proven effective for the PHO gens. First is an overview of scale. The MPLPH Season 6 qualifiers was held in a span of 4 days with 1,207 teams registered, all of them to actively compete during the qualifiers. Now that number is bigger than the Season 1 and Season 2 qualifier registrations combined and accounting for probability that leaves a 0.17% chance for a team to qualify for the regular season and claim the title of an MPL team. Less than 1%. Not just accounting for skills, but for fatigue and preparation, I think that figure alone is enough to emphasize how hard it is to win the qualifiers. With only two teams to win, that's 1,205 teams that will lose. More than 6,000 individuals and another good 10,000 direct supporters, friends, and families who hope and yet embrace failure in that four days. Remember this family and friends told each other, okay lang yan, bawi tayo next season, diba? Now, meaning that is okay, we'll come back on the next season. That's why, just with this, I think it's too much to call the MPLPH Season 6 qualifiers. Four days of dreams, hopes, and thousands of people pitted against each other. A clown show of having teams that defeated thousands and yet shouldn't be there. But let's not appeal to emotion. Let's forget about the 1,200 plus teams and the shattered dreams of each that were insulted. Let's talk about analysis and meta. Did the teams during the main qualifiers played and drafted bad? Let's talk about it. Now, there are so many things to be talked about the main qualifiers. I'll focus more on the points you have mentioned in your video and more so on the day two of the main qualifiers where you claim that Doggy's team and XP had a free pass of getting into the MPL. First is when you explained how you feel about the meta. I want to first quickly talk about the overall sensation that I got after watching two full days of MPL Philly. Feel, right? I was expecting you would expound on that. What you feel. But when you did it, it got me more confused, Dave, right? You started your points by comparing the erratic drafting of the qualifier teams to RRQ Indonesia's consistent drafting of Loi, Valier, Farsa during the Indonesian qualifier. Now, that may be confused because first, this is not an MPL qualifier. That is the MPL Invitational Four Nations Cup that you are pertaining to. There is a qualifier for this tournament and RRQ did participate there but all participants here are of an MPL protein caliber. Actually, there are more than that. All participants are of an MPL champion caliber. Also, you are comparing RRQ, the Indonesian Season 5 champion, to a qualifier team. Now, I do understand you may say it's not an excuse, but when it comes to analyzing effectively, you have to account for the tiering of the team. That's why we have power rankings in any MPL. That's why we have amateur and pro classification in esports. To understand that things work differently between tiers, more so between amateur, pro, and even aspiring pro. If it's totally normal for pro teams to have repetitive and consistent drafting that revolve around what's in the meta, then it's totally normal to have erratic and surprising drafts during a qualifiers, especially if you came from a 1000 plus aspiring pro team's bloodbath. But again, if it's still not an excuse, let's go to the draft directly, to the heroes. I just hope you take this with an empty cup for it is very effective in analysis. They don't have to go show off their skills on picking someone like Eudora. They don't troll like that. Okay, they don't pick Alucard. They don't pick Dyroth. They pick heroes that is in the meta where you go to MPLPH 
And I figure a lot of teams actually pick Dyroth when there are tons of other fighters available, when Jawhead available, when all the other heroes available, they will pick Dyroth. For what? You know, I feel like Mobile Legends Professional League in PH have a lot of people that just want to show off. Look at us, you know, we're going to win with this hero. We're going to win with Alucard, which is absolutely unprofessional. In your video, it seems you just dismissed the new hero picks of the teams as an act of showing off instead of really understanding why pick that hero. Let's go with the Dyrot. Now, the Dyrot was introduced during the crucial game 3 between Archangel versus Signal Ultra. Both are former MPL teams in terms of brand and both are heavily favored to come back to MPL. Both opened up in game 1 just heavily countering each other in terms of man and draft. From here, they ended up having a Ling versus Lancelot matchup. More so, a new meta hero Hilda popped out to answer the matchup. Now, Archangel won with the Ling. In Game 2, Archangel was forced to ban the Ling as a red side, leaving the Lancelot to signal. And forced with an Atlas front and Cyclops support, they tried answering with the high loss, but it was not enough. Signal won Game 2 easily. Their composition with the Cyclops was stellar. Game 3 came and Archangel is still on the red. Forced to ban the Ling, they prevented the same draft sequence as with Game 2 by deny picking the Atlas. Loi was chosen by Imba DJ to enforce their good melee composition and maybe even take on Atlas directly. Archangel was cycling through their main funnel, hovered to Roger, Hayabusa, Kari, and Hellkirk, and finally locked down to Dyrot. We expected Dyrot to lose. Instead, he went on to have a KDA of 8-1-2, dying only once when Signal made that decisive play with Loi pushing with the Lord. All elements come into play for Signal in that fight. Using melee heroes, they quickly punished and deleted the Atlas. They went for the backline using Loi's ultimate and was able to get in melee rage against an all flicker team that is Archangel. Now, does that make the Dyrot pick bad, right? No. Archangel was winning. They have a 4k gold lead against Signal. It's just Signal was able to make the right decision when it is required. But why Dyrot though, right? I mean, compared to Hayabusa and Hellkirk, Dyrot will win the melee matchups against all heroes of Signal. He also won't struggle with the early game PK rotating harass practice in previous games just because he can quickly delete Popple with just a couple of skills. Despite losing the game, the Dyrot pick worked for Archangel in that game. Actually, there are so many new meta picks that work during the main qualifiers such as Cyclops and Hilda. So, again, I really don't get why you are too critical and about those picks to a point you are calling them troll picks. Again, it's, it's more progressive if we try to understand or figure out what happened within the minds of the players and the teams whenever they make such picks. Or maybe I'm just really mistaking you for an analyst or someone knowledgeable about MLBB. And your video is purely just a reaction video. That's why you dismiss the picks as flex or brag picks. And I wonder what's going on in your mind as you watch the whole qualifiers. I mean, you watch the two days of 9 hours, huh? And all you got is that, right? Now, on to the next, on to the next. The initiator pick of yours. You keep on emphasizing initiator as a heavy requirement to any composition as you claim that it is basic for any MOBA genre. Again, no it is not. It always depends. There are so many composition in different MOBA that didn't require initiators. Like the Protect the Cogmo composition or a Poke composition in League of Legends. There's also that Fast Push composition in Dota 2. An initiator usually takes heavy requirement if you are focusing on building a composition designed for team fights. And although we see a lot of team fights in uh, Mobile Legends, there are two things in MLBB that takes higher priority than team fights, and that is rotation and lane management. Compared to other MOBAs and more so to PC MOBAs, the map of Mobile Legends is so small that team fights or skirmishes are given. But again, the map is so small that to build an effective composition in ML requires you to find the best combinations of heroes that rotate effectively. And when we say rotation, that means getting and denying buffs and objectives consistently. That's why it all led to the 131, right? Remember that that 131 was never designed to stay 131 at the end of the game. It quickly transitions to a 401, 410, then a 050, and maybe back to 131 again. Depends on what happens during the game. But bottom line, drops are done with priority on rotation and never an initiation. <laughs> Initiator, right? 
The only initiator hero they had was the game one where they had a Katal Kacha. And that's not really an initiator. That's what I call the epiphany of trolls, all right? You basically just trolled. I mean, you simply cannot play a game when your team doesn't have a steady, a reliable source of initiation. That's basic of any MOBA. You are so keen on emphasizing initiation to the point that you disregard Gatot Kacha as an epitome of trolls when in fact it was chosen to answer the pressure from Masha. When Breakpoint doesn't see Atlas to work against NXP, this is totally reasonable for BP to target Masha as there are running thoughts about NXP that if you disable Renegade, who is in the Masha that time, you disable H2. Now you see, there's always a reason behind things, right? Behind every pick. And barely do you see trolls, especially for high stake matches, as all of these players, even with the gap in skills and knowledge, are taking this qualifier seriously. And by the way, the epitome of Troll Gatot Kacha brought the Burmese Ghouls to the semifinals of the MPL4 Nations Cup. He is a candidate new meta pick for Season 6 along with Hilda and Cyclops. And here's another one. Doggy's team didn't do anything special. All they had was a Kufra, all they had was a Farsa, and guess what? Those are just basic meta heroes that they picked up. There was nothing special to their rotations. Is NXP's rotation just magical compared to BP? I do not think so. It's one through one basic. Everybody do the same thing. You claimed NXP just pulled off a simple 1-3-1 and did nothing special in their game against BP. No! No, NXP acknowledged the threat of BP. First, they have a Masha in a secondary retribution and made sure either the Hellcurt or Lunox don't get any of their buffs. They also have Yaoi playing very aggressively on that Kufra despite the threat of that Lilia in the early game. And most importantly, observing both games against BP, NXP never forced a teamfight under an inhibitor turret despite having a very big lead already against BP. They also don't shove their lanes so as to lure out or force out BP to farm out of the bits. Contrary to their usual playstyle, NXP was playing safe, a reflection that they really want to make sure getting into the MPL despite the easy bracket that they have. So, I can't help but feel you see compositions in MLBB in just one dimension, right? Team 5. You doubted the effect of Lilia when she was chosen to limit the main funnel's movement, Harit. She is actually one of the oldest counter to Harit but fall out of the meta after the jungle changes. Also, I think this is an honest mistake. I mean, what is Lilia gonna do in the middle of the team fight? Yes, early game is a little bit strong. Yes, they end up getting a first blood, I think. But what, what is Lilia gonna do in a mid to late game team fight? Nothing! Nothing! How is it gonna stop Farsa? Farsa outranged Lilia. And Helker can one shot Lilia, right? Right? You have a Lancelot can one shot Lilia as well. But you mentioned you have Lancelot that can one shot the Lilia? <laughs> When they're on the same team, right? So, there is that. Now, let's move to your breakdown of the NXP versus Team C match. This is where... I'm sorry, but I really started doubting your capacity to analyze games. I would agree that it would be nice if Team C has chosen a support early on. But not low -y. But you have to understand how Team C is trying to draft. With Ling, Yuzong, and Uranus banned, it makes a lot of sense to secure the jawhead after NXP showed Damus. This is to counter Thamus using an ejector, and here in PH, Joyd is also used to counter Kofra using, yeah, ejector, you know? From here, Team C is willing to give Yawi the Kofra. You also have to understand that Team C is looking up what would be the Rene J and H2 hero, assuming it would be a uh, Masha, Hellcurt, or Lancelot. That's why they've chosen a stable melee combo in Xborg and Atlas. With this, Team C has no more option to have Poke in their comp because they first banned the Selena, not wanting to risk giving that to Chester, whereas the value is secured by NXP. It would be nice if Team C secured the Lui early instead of Atlas, but it seems that Team C does not play the Lui. Also, I want to go on you pressing the Lui pick. Lui is available. Where is the common sense, right? Don't you guys watch MPL Indonesia? Why not pick Lui early on? This hero is probably the strongest. I'm not gonna say the second strongest. I'm gonna say probably the strongest. The strongest support in the game. Bars none, no second best, okay? Even to the point of claiming her as the strongest support in the meta and asking where is the common sense of the teams for not picking her, right? So from here, it seems that the one who's losing his senses is you, Dave. As obviously, Lugi is not within the pool of Team C. I mean, you know it, uh, Doggy in his call has mentioned how limited uh, their pool is, right, for Team C. And Team C has a lot of common sense 
to not force playing something they don't know. Especially in this high-stakes qualifying match. Also, Loye is not the best support in the meta, dude. There are so many main funnel hero that can easily tag Loye. Lee, you get Lancelot, and even secondary finals such as Hellcurt. Valir! You know, Valir would rank higher by having more survivability in his kit and still, between the two, Valir is easier to use and more rewarding, right? I'm also at loss when you mention Low Yi counters almost all of NXP's pick. Like, it would counter the Valir, it would counter the Roger, and again, before picking the Valir and the Roger, NXP banned Low Yi because they know that, right? And they know it works well with the jaw head. So, so how can... How can Team C even pick the Loyi if it is banned? Um, now, and I'm not pertaining to preemptive picking, ah, because that would then change NXP's fourth and fifth pick. Valier and Roger wouldn't be, be uh, chosen, right? Aside from Team C not playing it, Dave, Loyi is banned. That's why they cannot pick it. In Mobile Legends, when you ban a hero, you cannot pick it. Alright? <laughs> Like I said in one of my posts, analysis all over the place, right? You even mentioned, don't you people watch MPL Indonesia? And yes, we do. And my answer is, what's up with it, right? Your video has an undertone that we should learn from this region, Indonesia, because they are a strong region. And for years, we are. We've been watching them, same as they've been watching us. And you're, you're, peg of, you're pegging them of uh, being a strong region. I don't know, right? Indonesia's strength in MLBB has always been put to question by Philippines. Remember that. Indonesia may hold the very first M1 title, but it is in the Philippines that we hold the very first gold medal for MLBB in the prestigious Southeast Asian Games. That's history in itself. There's even a chance that it won't happen again. And, you know, let's ignore the credentials, na? shall we? Let's have a little peek at how this country's draft. You say Loyi is the best support, but RRQ, the current MPL Indonesia champion, stomped the Four Nations Cup without picking the Loyi in their finals. It was their opponent that picked it, and they choose Farsa and Selina over Loyi. And speaking of Troll and uh, Flex Peak, they choose Balmond in the final series. Actually, during the Four Nations Cup, it's within their pool, right? Of course, as I keep on saying, there's always a reason. So, you see, I, I really don't get it. Despite my efforts to understand why say things such as troll peaks, lack of common sense, no initiator, Louis best pick 2020, all I can conclude is this is your level of understanding of competitive MLBB. And maybe I'll just give that to you, right? Now, le let's move on to Team C's Changu pick in Game 2, in which you once again disregarded it as a troll peak or ranked pick. Now, let me give the background of the Changa pick for you. Now, Team C opened up with a denial pick Hellcurt against Renegade, as he has been a hustle in Hellcurt for Game 1. This time, willing to give Selina to Chester in exchange for Valir, they've observed from their Game 1 that they have a fighting chance over NXP's aggressiveness if they take fights from a distance. Hence, they stick to Changu. Now, you keep on pressing that the Changu pick uh, was bad as it can easily be countered by a Lolita, and Baksha, when those two heroes are not even possible to be picked anymore. You know, right? There is something that we call drafting sequence, right? And NXP already picked the Grok. They already showed Selena support, has a Thamus, and went double fighter with Masha. The Changu pick is an effective counter against the slow movements of Thams and Grok, while at the same time can depush any pressure from the Masha. It's a good pick for this case. And from their team, she just gambled, which work in the open qualifiers by finishing the damage dealt by Chang'u using Hellcurt Execute. So, yeah, in terms of uh, lane control, Team C has the better composition. But NXP knows this. And what Team C failed to realize is NXP is eyeing not the lanes but the jungle camps. The grab and the master retribution allows for H2 to be confident he will win the final race no matter what. That's why he picked the now early game nerf down Bruno. To repeat, the Chango cannot be countered by Alolita and Baksha because both cannot be picked anymore and the Chango pick makes a lot of sense. Even NXP acknowledged that by again not forcing fights under the inhibitor and surgically finish the game by taking the Lord and force a push. Beating our expectations in the NXP and Team C qualifier finals, Game 1 ended with a 17 minute and 53 seconds timer. 
far from what you just said, Chang was a very useful hero in that game. And then we go to game 2. I actually have no excuse for the Kagura. Because of an ongoing issue, Kax was not allowed to play for the major part of the qualifiers. But in a crucial game 2 of a qualifier finals, he was allowed to sub in and from there, a wild Kagura appeared on the 5th pick. As you both expected, it was a flop. Though, I'm really trying to understand where the Kagura pick is coming from. And the only reason I see is that Kax is a top PH Kagura player, which for me is not valid. As you observe Team C during the qualifiers, we have this team term called umiinet, which means a team is getting hotter and hotter the more games they played during the high pressure environment a tournament provides. This is observable to Team C as they have steadily adjusted to the aggressive playstyle of NXP. Enter Cax on their Team C and NXP fourth match and all the hits stored was resetted. And it feels like he wants to get to the MPL using a hero that is maybe close to him or something he really likes and what he sees is not a bad pick during the game. And that is of a Kagura. Now Kagura actually is within the meta, it's also shown in the Four Nations Cup, right? But this led him to approach the game with great consideration for himself but not for his teammates. And yeah, didn't work. I think all the insults, Dave, you put on your video is only applicable to Kax, right? Maybe you guys can talk together and, you know, teach each other how to play Mobile Legends. I think you have a lot of things in common. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. That's it for my technical breakdown of the MPL PH Season 6 qualifiers. Of how and why such picks were made. Now, I want to focus more on to you now, Dave. About the things you said at the ending part of your video. Returning my assumptions and judgments, I'm really curious. What is your intention? Now, my friends know me as a person who never look on how famous a person is. I always see them on what they are doing and their intentions in doing it. That's why I don't suck up to Doggy like you do. And honestly, I don't like Doggy, you know? But you, Dave, why, me? why are you doing this, right? Why say this line? Is this really the professional league in Philippines? Where is the basic understanding of the meta? Learn from RRQ for God's sake. <laughs> Just because you are casually derping at your home, trying to look for another content source, sees a farce and not being able to land an ultimate in a Bruno, then you would conclude that the MPLPH pro scene is lacking in understanding the basics. I think the judgment falls back to you, Dave. I think you are the one who doesn't have the basic understanding of what the meta is or of how competitive games should be understood and digested. Watch RRQ, we did. They don't always pick Loi. They have Balmond in their arsenal. Watch MPL Indonesia, we did. And they are not better than PH. If they have M1, we get the gold in SEA Games, and we both have a fair share of MSC titles. The battle between these two regions is far from over. And... <laughs> it is really the competitive level, Ken. It is really Mobile Legends Professional League in Philly. Come on, guys, come on. I don't know what I was watching. Maybe mechanically, they're good. But macro, but Ben draft. Oh gosh, my heart, man. My heart goes to the North, poor North American European teams who do not have the opportunity to go join this kind of competition. My heart goes to Team India, who doesn't even have opportunity to play the game anymore. And yet, this is this is professional league from Philly. Oh my god. Gosh, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, I love it, Dave. I mean, you speak really well, right? Especially when you went, come on, guys, come on. And ah, my heart goes out to NA and EU and India, something like that. As if you have the credentials to say these things. All right? Maybe maybe you're just doing it, your influencer work. But this one, right? this one right here. English is a secondary language for me and many Filipinos. But it doesn't take a genius to hear your arrogance here. Or I think maybe you're just going ham for the video and maybe it's just you're just trying to sound arrogant. Maybe you're not really arrogant, right? Nonetheless, your video has a lot of wrong assumptions going on. Your analysis is all over the place and more importantly, your approach to analyzing games. Now, you know these two are different. Needs a lot of improvement. Like I said, try to have an empty cup in analyzing competitive games. Try to understand no matter how hard or maybe just let the game present it to you. You shouldn't disregard picks outside the meta as troll picks, but instead, see the reason or logic behind such pick. For me, MLBB is a MOBA whose drafting is the easiest to call because of the usually low number of heroes that is included in the meta. 
I think the pool of MLBB's Meta Hero may need some more work, but the frequency of change in MLBB's Meta has improved a lot. We can see new hero picks getting introduced as early as two weeks compared to uh, months back then. And if we have a full cup, if we have a fixed assumption of how the meta should be, then we would lose the capacity to discern and understand it. We would be calling leagues as a joke and make a video like yours. Also, please understand that the meta is most erratic during an off-season, during these invitationals, during these qualifiers. So, you know, don't be surprised seeing Django, Pix, Hellcurts Execute, or even Balmond. I'm always excited about the things I do not know. And I think you should too, Dave. Also, Dave, just, just to let you know, but I think you know this already, for everyone who were involved in the qualifier, your video is just insulting. I mean, the MPL PH Season 6 qualifiers is not a joke. Or at least we will only know after we see Signal and NXP play during the regular season. And NXP is already claiming they will crush all the teams in the regular season. Anyway, I heard you already apologize for your video. I want to think that this is all just for cloud chase and not because you really don't understand competitive MLBB. I've heard you also made a video insulting that other game but <laughs> maybe let's say that for another time, right? I will be ignoring any response to this video or issue and I suggest you should too. And I suggest ignore the negative comments or chat in your stream, dude. I mean, I really feel sorry that you insulted the worst people in the internet. Us Filipinos. As we Filipinos has the notoriety of going to great lets just to prove someone is wrong. Anyway, that's it for this video, Dave. Empty cup and have Gax teach you MLBB. And maybe try to reconsider your clickbait titles next time. Um, and also I would like to make a public appeal to Moonson, as I think this will acknowledge a root problem cited in Dave's video in the first place. But I hope Moonson can give us an NA, EU, PH, and Indonesia Invitational Tournament. I think all of us want it. And I think it benefits the global MLBB community in general. And who would say no for an opportunity to prove he is the better region? I am Shibu the One for an eye and peace.